Hi guys, and welcome back to another Let's Build episode. So last time we were building up some lower class housing, and in this episode, we're going to get on and build a church. Now if you're new to the channel at all, we do a lot of tutorials and time lapses just like this one, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also guys, if you're new to this series, I'll leave a link in the card above as well as in the description to both the full Let's Build Pataria series and also the full Let's Build Lordsport series. Anyway, let's get into building. So the first thing I want to do is of course lay out the rough shape. So I decided to go with the typical kind of cross shape. Um, initially I looked at it and I was thinking, let's do this on an angle, let's make it challenging. And I very quickly decided that that wasn't a good idea. Um, the reason being, although an angle would have been good, it would have made it really difficult and this is actually gonna be the biggest church that I've built. So that's always quite good. It is quite large. Um, I wanted to put it on the hill here an angle probably would have fit better, but like I was saying, it's quite difficult, especially if you haven't done something like this for a while. But we will do more angled churches, or we will do angled churches and chapels in the rest of the city. So yeah, building out a basic cross shape. Um, I'm actually basing this church off of one from Antwerp. Um, so it's St. James's Church in Antwerp. Um, I made a load of different changes off of it, but that was the main reference picture um, because what it had was a really nice tower at the front. So I was thinking, you know what, that, I really like the tower, so I'm going to use that and I also like the cross shape uh, of the actual church itself. So I tried to kind of figure that out and make sure that that's part of my design. But of course I went a little bit uh, different, changed quite a lot of it um, because it did look almost like almost towards a cathedral. So at the minute the windows are really really high up uh, but I'm actually going to change those later on and actually just shorten them a little bit. Because of the scale of it, because of it being so big, I wasn't too sure actually how big I should make the windows, how tall the actual building would be. But when I had actually put it all together I could then go, ah actually yeah that is looking a little bit too elongated. Luckily because I've got world edit I can just do a nice command and just move those blocks downwards and it will just shorten it which is exactly what I did. Now guys, what I want you to comment about on this episode is what is the name of the church? So what I mean by this is, you know, a lot of the churches will be like St. Paul's or St. James's, um, St. Peter's uh, or John. What is going to be the saint of this church if you're going to go with a saint? And also a little bit of backstory, how did they become a saint if that is what they are? Um, that would be really, really cool. Um, and that will help fill out my law. It is quite a big church on East Point because East Point was the first kind of place uh, or the first part of the city that's kind of evolved. Um, you know, lots of houses have been uh, knocked down to make way for a bigger church over time. So it might have been that it's grown over time. So getting on to the front, uh, what I'm doing right at the minute is actually doing exactly what I was just saying, shortening it down because it just looked a little bit too big. But the idea will be that we've got a very large tower at the front of it. Um, this is going to have the, of course, the bells in it. But because it's actually so large, that's also where the priests can actually uh, stay and live. So that kind of all works quite nicely. Um, it is quite a big tower. And yeah, like I was saying, it's based on the one from Antwerp, St. James's from Antwerp. So I wanted to do lots of buttresses on, on this one. Uh, so it's got a lot of support. This actually really helped to frame things as well. So this actually was, yeah, really, really key, uh, surprisingly, to, to the whole kind of design of it. Um, and it looks really good. So it allowed me to put in all these different windows. Uh, with, with the windows, I actually decided to do something I've never done before, which is putting fence gates across them. Um, so I could see this kind of like cross pattern with a lot of the church windows uh, in front of it. And I wanted to have that kind of uh, checkered pattern going on. So that's why I decided to kind of go with that. And that, I think, actually worked really nicely. Uh, I'm really happy with how it actually turned out. So lots of windows going up, and then when we get to the higher part, this is where I kind of deviated from the, the pitch that I had. I decided to go with it being a little bit different. Lots of these smaller windows, so you get these bigger windows down the bottom, which are quite long, and then you get these shorter, thinner windows at the top, and that looks really, some, for some reason, it looks really pleasing to the eye. Um, so don't ask me why, but it just does. It just looks really good. Now the roof, I was trying to get very square, and because of that, I could not decide <laughs> at all on if it actually looked good. So the one I went with um, was this, but actually I go back and I actually change it. I actually make it into, uh, I kind of like 
make it less square-like and more like an actual spire going up. Um, I just wasn't happy with how it turned out, but as a tower, it actually almost rivals the Merchant Tower, and it's on a slight, slightly bigger hill, so technically, with the point on it, it's higher than the Merchant Tower we've got, so we've now got two towers, uh, or two main towers in the city. Looks really cool. So coming around to the back part of the church, I wanted to make this rounded. I could see this on a lot of different churches, so I thought, you know, that is actually looking really good. So, yeah, gonna have to gonna go with that. Um, the roof, I used plots in order to find out what the circular circles were. Um, and then, yeah, just putting in the actual windows, I wanted to do these on angles as well. So the two along the sides, because it's quite a soft angle, you can actually do it quite nicely. And it doesn't really, doesn't doesn't look too bad at all. And then having a window right on the back here. Uh, all of them are using stained glass. I did use the same pattern throughout. Uh, what I might do is end up tweaking that as well. Um, it depends on depends on how it looks. Really, it's really difficult to tell with shaders, but without shaders on, um, you know, you, d you can actually see the kind of colours a lot better. So coming on to the interior of this one, I want to do the interior in this episode um, as well because it's quite cool. I think with churches, it's such an iconic building. I thought, why not make this a longer episode? Why not do a bit of interior? So I've got a big bell at the top. I'm actually going to switch that out later on because, thinking about it, we need multiple bells for that part of it so that we can, you know, do different chimes uh, when you've got the bell ringers going. So I'm going to change that at some point and actually put in lots of different bells. You can see the birch fence that I've got in the background there as well. That is where the rope is going down, and that goes all the way down to the bottom floor. All of these floors that we've got here are going to be where the living quarters are for the priests. Then as we come around to the front part of it, I want to make a nice grand entrance. I'm actually using the dark oak trap doors. They look really good with dark oak doors. And I've also gone with um, actually switching it out to lodestone. So I did or was using polished andesite at one point. So coming around to the main kind of ceiling part of it, unfortunately it's just for some reason just too dark. I did try to try to up the brightness in editing, but it just didn't turn out quite right. But what I've gone with is those buttresses that are on the outside. That then follows onto the inside to make these uh, kind of bigger stretches, these bigger archways along the roof for support. And then having um, the typical kind of pattern going across the roof as well to support itself to all push itself up. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. You can see it a little bit better now that we've got all the uh, torches in. So this is right at the back of the church itself, so where we've got the rounded parts, so just putting in an extra bit of the pattern on there. And then we come down, I have got a nice big altar. So I decided to do this in this kind of back area. I'm actually building a chancel, so this is all kind of a bit separate. We've got benches on the two sides of it. There would probably be uh, seating in the middle as well. But I decided to keep it blank and instead have some nice red carpets. We've got that there. Um, building a really nice big cross. I ended up playing with a couple of materials, but going with granite in the end and getting some banners with as flags for the actual uh, church pattern itself. So in the middle, I was tempted to build a dome or something like that, but I think we're going to use that for a cathedral of some kind, or maybe have a giant spire coming out of the cathedral. I want to keep this one relatively basic, except the front tower. I wanted that to be where the main focal point is. So this area above, or just in front of the chancel, uh, this is where we're actually going to have an organ. So this is something I've been wanting to build in Minecraft for years, and I have never, never built an organ, uh, but I absolutely love them. So I decided to go with using banners again. Um, I tried it out with kind of grey stripes with the brown background so it goes with the dark oak but I ended up changing it because it just looked a little bit too dull so I changed it to yellow to give that kind of gold effect of the organ itself. Then we have all of the pews going back on this part which is called the nave so we've got all of that uh, going on there and I also want to make a couple of confession boxes so we've actually got two of them uh, using lots and lots of trapdoors. Because of the area that we've actually got onto the tower, I thought, you know, this is a good area to actually have some form of balcony um, and to actually put in a little bit more detail as well so you can actually get to that from the tower. Then around the side, we've got more seating uh, because it is, you know, serving quite a large population and the same on the other side as well. We've got seating and in the back, I actually build a water font because, uh, of course, you need to have somewhere where you've got your holy water. So here it is guys, I'm really happy with how this turned out. We've got lots to do around it, but it's such a cool building and of course it's such a focal point as well. Uh, that tower especially, you know, really draws your eye and you can see it from quite far with the prismarine roof as well, that kind of copper patina uh, that it kind of looks like, that's really good. I'm really happy with how that all turned out and of course it has taken up 
quite a large space in East Point. Um, I definitely didn't plan to make it this big, but it just kind of fits. So I just thought, you know, let's go with what actually fits and what works. Um, but really happy with just how it all looks and the different bits of stone that we've got there. I think it just looks really cool. So then just coming on to the interior as well, we've got that whole, uh, the nave part of it there. Uh, and then we've also got the organ. I'm really happy with how the organ turned out. Um, I think it looks absolutely great. Uh, I've even got the foot pedals in there. But anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.